What's up, everybody? Jensen Cummings here. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. This is Best Served Podcast 165. We're talking food ordering apps with Leah Debus of Chow Now. Leah, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. All right. Best Served Smart, where we really focus on smart kitchens, technology, innovation, tools, and equipment to empower the humans working within the hospitality industry to amplify their businesses. And Chow Now, I'm sure if if you're in a restaurant and you haven't been under a rock for the last decade, you know about Chow Now, you understand what's happening with the delivery, and maybe you don't. So hopefully we're going to break through to you today. Chow Now, Leah, tell us very specifically, what is Chow Now as a company? What can people expect from Chow Now? So Chow Now, we're a white label online ordering company. So we're very different than the Grubhubs, the Uber Eats of the world. Everything we do is behind the scenes, which is why a lot of people have never heard of us. They might have used our technology and not even realized it before. Yeah, you never know. And we actually, we love that um, because we want the restaurant to put their brand first. We believe the restaurant should own the customer. um, And we want to help strengthen the relationships that the restaurant has with their customer through online ordering technology. Um, We offer our services for a flat fee. So we don't take a percentage of the sale. Um, And yeah, we're just the best option for restaurants when it comes to takeout and delivery. I love it. The best option, full stop. Uh, (laughs) White label. When you say white label, again, for anybody who doesn't understand, what what specifically does that mean? So what that means is... um, we are we are the technology that runs behind the ordering experience. And when the customer is ordering from, let's say, your website, or we build you your own mobile app, um, they're not being redirected to chownow.com. They're not going somewhere else to place their order. They're able to do that directly within your own branded channels. So if you go to if you wanted online ordering on your website, we would add that to your website, and people would think it's just a part of your site. And right. it's, that's what we mean when we say white label. Yeah. The branding is not focused on Chow Now. It's focused on your brand. Owning mm-hmm. your customer. This is coming up a lot, a lot, a lot. And I've been trying to trying to hammer that home because we're thinking transactionally. I got the sale. So the sale is mine. The customer is not yours. Explain what you mean by that. So every time a customer orders from you, that's an opportunity for you to build a new relationship and create a loyal customer. It's much harder to get them to order from you the first time than it is to have them order from you the second time, the third time. So knowing who that customer is, is critical for your restaurant success. Um, having access to be able to communicate with them after their first order is critical to your restaurant success. So what Chow Now does is we also act as a CRM or customer relationship management system where we capture that customer for you. You have access to that data. You know their name, their email address. You can reach out to them. Um, And then we even have some simple products so that you don't even have to think about it. You can just say, I want to send out a monthly email and do a promotion every month. And Chow Now will actually, on your behalf, it looks like your restaurant sending the email. It's your restaurant's brand, your logo, your food image, your promotion going out to them every month, and you haven't even had to do anything. So it's just making it super easy for your average local restaurant or regional chain to have the same kind of technology and marketing um, oomph that somebody like a Domino's has or a Starbucks has or a Panera has. You can do it too. I like that. So and we'll, let's talk about, we'll talk about marketing a little bit more later. I want to talk about the customer for a second. And so I want to make sure that restaurant people really, really understand. There's a couple of dynamics at play that I just want to like suss through for a second. So delivery, when people think of delivery in the full service hospitality that I came up with as a chef, we are quick to demonize because we say, no, 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 you're supposed to come to us and allow us to make this amazing experience for you because we are only thinking about our four walls as the opportunity for us to create that dynamic experience. That's no longer the case. We have exponential space within our markets to be able to create that experience. It just can't be with butts and seats all the time. And so there's some predatory practice stuff that I think we know about it. You mentioned it. We'll talk a little bit more about the fee structures, but the percentage sales come up all the time. And we think about like, wow, 30% of that, I can't make money. I'm losing money or I have to charge the customer more if they came to my space. I want to make sure that we don't demonize the customer. I, as a chef, love being able to get on here 
and get my favorite tacos in town, my favorite burger in town, my favorite pizza, my favorite empanadas, whatever it might be, my favorite bowl of ramen. I love that. And I am in the industry and I'm absolutely somebody who came up saying butts and seats experiential is top of mind. So I want to make sure we understand people being willing to bring your brand in their home is something we should celebrate. So let's focus on the ways that you can go about that. It's already written. This is going to be a trillion dollar industry in the next few years of takeout and delivery. You have to be on board with it. You need to figure out the best way for you to do it. And Chow Now is an option. And like you said, Leah, the best option in your guys' opinion. But for me, I, I've been looking at you guys for a long time. I'm I'm struggling to find chinks in the armors, but uh, which is a good thing that you guys have done. So I really, really appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit more about practical. I'm a restaurant operator. I want your product. What are the next steps? How do we go about getting the API going, getting integrated into the system? Yeah, so we can work with any restaurant no matter how technical you are. So even if you don't have a restaurant website, we'll set you up with a website. If you have a website, we can work with any website. We'll I, I like how you did that. Sorry, <laughs> we're Luddites. I get it. Like no matter how technically savvy you are, I completely hear you there. Uh cuz some restaurants it's a little bit of a struggle. I hear you. So I appreciate yeah. the thoughtfulness there. Yes. Well, we don't expect you to be uh, a guru at websites. You're great at make, making food. You're you're a cook. You're a chef. Um, yeah. That's what you that's what you do. So yeah. this is what we do. Um, we will. What essentially what we need is your menu, and you need to tell us what modifications you want on your menu. Um, if you're already on a marketplace site and your and your menu's up to date, there you can just send us the link there, and we'll set everything up for you. Wow. Um, we do. Every order that comes through Chow Now is paid for in full, which right now is really important um, for the consumer because it's contactless. Yes. I can place my order, pay for it. When I show up at your restaurant, I don't have to touch anything. All I have to do is say, hey, I'm Leah. That's my that's my order. Thank you so much. Or if I choose to have it delivered, then um, that can be, you don't have to deal with payment there either. Um, so we do need bank information. We do nightly payouts. So okay. you get paid every single night. Um, and yeah, really, I mean, we just, you just need to be ready to work with us and willing to take our advice to make this successful. Um, cause just putting a button on your site, it is going to drive some orders, but it's really important for you yeah. to also get the word out to your customers that this is, that this is now available. So we can help you with your social media posts, get the word out. Um, we'll give you some graphics that you can post. Um, we give you marketing kit to start. So signage, um, we give you flyers that if you are using the other services, you can drop those flyers in the takeout bag to encourage your consumer, your customers to order from you directly. Um, we've seen restaurants get really creative there because a lot of times the consumer doesn't really realize that ordering from a, from a Grubhub or an Uber Eats is that that's, that could actually hurt your restaurant. And they, they just love your food and that's the way that they know how to order. So you have to tell them the way that you want to order. Um, Yes, I want to. I want to hover on what you just said for a second. One thing yeah. that's fascinating to me: we have a great restaurant. I'll give them a shout out right now. Fifty two eighty Burger Bar. That's like right outside our back door. And even my wife, who's been in the industry for years and like really understands, one day was ordering food from them while we're you know quarantined at home to walk over and pick it up. And and I just happened to catch her phone. And I was like, "Did you just order from DoorDash?" She's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Don't order from DoorDash. They're right over there. Figure out a way." And it turns out they actually have their own internal online ordering that you can do. Yet it was just frictionless because she's ordered from DoorDash before. And so even thoughtful consumers who are in the industry are just looking for the lowest point path of least resistance, I guess is what it is. And so convenience is king, absolutely. I wanna make sure people really understand that. To remarket to your customer, you have somebody from a third party deliver app who purchases from you. There is a high potential, like I think you should get on all of those apps because there's a high potential that person has never heard of you. They're using it as a search tool. They mm -hmm. find you, they purchase from you, which they never would have done through your normal channels. That is a huge opportunity. Yet if you don't remarket to them, if you don't retarget an opportunity, it's huge. So you're giving them collateral to be able to do that. Uh, and the marketing kit, does it include any strategy? Because I feel like that's a big thing that the restaurants don't even recognize that they need the strategy to then deploy the tactic of remarketing with whatever collateral. 
Yes. So when a restaurant works with China, they get assigned to a dedicated restaurant success manager. Good. And all that person does all day is consult with restaurants, understand their business and help them win with online ordering. Um, and I agree with what you just said. A new customer is, you know, that is worth paying for. But the unfortunate reality is, is in in these third party delivery apps, if you're not giving them another way or if you're not encouraging them to go directly to you, your loyal customers are in there ordering from you and they're they've you've essentially formed a habit where now you're paying 30 yes. percent every single week um so there's a way to break that habit and we have the we help consult and help restaurants figure that out and navigate that for their customer base break that habit i'm willing to pay 30 percent for a, a new customer i'm willing to pay 30 percent for two interactions with a new customer i'm not willing to pay 30 percent in perpetuity for that customer and i'm definitely to your point definitely not willing to pay 30 percent 20 percent even for a loyal customer who's been a guest of ours for a decade i think it's a hugely huge important so that's that's huge all right the uh, fee structures. Let's get into that a little bit. We're talking about breaking the habit of 30%. That's kind of the number that's out there. It's variable. People have different numbers. I've heard as low as 18. I've heard as high as 35. So let's talk about the flat rate fee that you charge. And let's start with that. And then we'll talk about how that contradicts to the percentage of sale. Yeah. So depending on um, how long uh, you sign up with us, um, our pricing starts at $99 a month. That's for a two-year commitment. Um, it goes up to $149 a month if you just want to go month to month. Okay. Um, but that includes a ton of value. So yeah. we do all the setup for you. Um, put in your menus. You We help you with that marketing kit. So that, that comes included. We actually send you posters and in, in, um, flyers for you to get started. It's all custom designed for your restaurant. Um, you have uh, unlimited menu edits. So if you want to call us up anytime, we just, we don't nickel and dime you. You're not going to be surprised by like hidden fees. It's really all inclusive. Um, the only variable is because we are processing credit cards, you do pay for that um, on a transaction basis, but our credit card rates are very competitive. Um, they're best in the industry. So um, you're, you know, taking a, taking an online order through us is the most affordable way you can do it. Um, and so you're saying that the three percent that you'd be paying to another processor that is being paid then to chow now instead correct. of processing. Okay. Yeah. So you're not double dipping. It's essentially one or the other. Um, right. Essentially, we just take on all the online processing, which is a different type of rate because your card isn't present. Chow um, now is taking on third party delivery apps and credit card processing. You're putting yourself uh, with a target on your back. I really like how much you're 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 working for the restaurants. I think that's important because those are two massive industries that now you're disrupting a little bit. Yeah, well, to be transparent, we use a company called Stripe. Um, so we're not actually, that's not our business, isn't credit card property. Okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah. the industry that is their business, like yep. Toast, for example, the way they make their money is all through credit card processing. Yep. Um, we're not set up that way. Um, and credit card processing is really kind of a necessary evil that we have to deal with uh, ourselves. Yes. But we, we try to take that headache away from the restaurant. Um, so for instance, if there's any, chargebacks or fraud, the rate that you pay chow now is all inclusive. So you're never going to get hit with that. We think that's actually our problem. If somebody's using our system to to fraud you, okay. we should have caught that and we are going to be responsible for that. Understood. So um yeah, so it's we just try to keep it really simple, really easy. Um we also you get a tablet, that's how orders come in. Um if you want the orders to flow into your POS, we have a direct integration with Square. Um, and then we, we can integrate into any other POS through other partnerships that we have. And so you do touch them all, Focus, Toast, Micros, the list goes on and on and on. Okay, because that's a big thing with technology. Like, does it integrate? Do I have to switch to a new three, four more systems? And now I'm adopting multiple new things that then make us clumsy. Because, you know, integration and adoption is where most things are lost. So uh, I can appreciate that. So let's say, let's go to why. Why the flat when in the marketplace already exists the precedent to be able to charge percentages based on transactions, why that model? It's our best interest is for the restaurant. So we're in it for the restaurant. Um, we just believe it's the right thing to do. Our mission is to help restaurants thrive. So our pricing model reflects that. We we could have made a lot of money a lot quicker if we yeah. went the other way, but we believe that long term we're going to be better off because we're doing the right thing for the restaurant. Restaurants are going to stick with us and, and love us for 
you know, years to come. So we're not in it for the short term. Uh, we we want to be restaurant partners for for the future. How many restaurants are you working with currently? So we currently work work with nineteen thousand restaurants that are live on our platform. Um, and I've actually, we've been pleasantly surprised and so happy that, uh, I know restaurants are going through a really hard time right now. Yeah. And we, you know, you see stats out there that like Yelp's putting out about, you know, this percentage of restaurants won't be in existence in the next few months. We actually haven't seen that on our side. So I think we're really fortunate. Um, our restaurants are, are staying open for the most part. You still have restaurants that are really struggling. Uh, absolutely. But we're really lucky that our restaurants, I think probably cause they have, they had a, plan before COVID that they're yeah. able to stay open and they're, they're actually, um, in many cases doing really well. So, um, they didn't have to pivot. All they had to do was accelerate or, or, you know, triple down on something that was already a part of their business model, which I, which I think is massive. And so 19,000 restaurants, uh, I'm interested in, in kind of some of the stories. Let's maybe talk about some of the restaurants, like, you know, what does it mean to you when a restaurant goes from, you know, X in sales and goes up 20%? I bet you have restaurants right now that are up 20% when most restaurants are down 70%. Like, what does it mean? Let's, let's talk to restaurant people. We're restaurant people. Let's talk to restaurant people. You said it's your, it's your goal to help them thrive. And so, you know, what, what are some of those stories that like really keep you all motivated out there in LA to keep hustling for restaurants? Oh my gosh. I don't even know where to begin. We have, yeah. We use Slack internally. Um, it's like our communication tool. It's essentially like a chat, a chat yeah. room for our company. And we have this channel called Voice of the Client. And like, there's probably ten stories a day um, of people just like an email that they sent us, or and just like this. I mean, for us, it's like this is our job, but for these people, it's their livelihood, and it's yes. like we're in a, such a position to help. So we we feel so fortunate and. Um, just lucky during this time that we're in a position to, to help out. Um, so, I mean, to be honest, like, I don't even know, I could pull up the channel right now and see. Oh, let's do it. Um, Absolutely. Let's, let's do that. This is great. All right. Let's see. Let's, all right. I like this to totally out of left field, but this is perfect. <laughs> we're going to Slack. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to read some things. So, uh, studying the food e-commerce industry for a while, Chow House, my favorite service, great business model. Let's see. That's, let me try to find something personal here. Like some, uh, I'm sending my kid to college. You know, that's what. That's what <gasps> I mean, get the all the time. I mean, for us, it's like they were able to keep their staff on. You know, they were able, like we, we, We've heard a lot of people that have changed some of their wait staff into like delivery drivers. And it's like, if I didn't have Chow Now, I wouldn't have been able to keep these people employed during this time like because of you and because of your help, like people are keeping their jobs. Um, so I think to us, like stories like that, it's it's huge. It's like why we come to work every day. Most of the people that work at Chow Now, they have a restaurant background or they just have a passion for restaurants. So um yeah, it's been really, it's been really amazing. Uh, we a couple of new people that we brought on board. Um, it's been really interesting too because we've had to hire a ton, and so we've been hiring from the industry as well. Um, so even restaurateurs that maybe chose to shut their doors and they love us, and now they're helping us with customer support. You know, people are calling in and they're like, "Let me help you out. I know what you're going through." I'm you guessing they, we're going to have the website linked up, uh, so if we can throw it on the banner right now. Uh, go to the website and there's a portal somewhere for jobs. I would love for the opportunity for some of our displaced humans in hospitality, what we call unsung hospitality heroes to be able to, you know, find a path right now. So is that where they should go? Yeah, absolutely. China.com slash careers. Okay. I like it. So uh, the delivery side of this mechanism, right? We're thinking about these third-party apps. They're handling it, right? Somebody shows up with a red DoorDash bag and they're a DoorDash driver. It's very much the Uber model where they're a contractor. Uh, how does that work then? Is, is Chow Now supporting the food actually getting to the customer? Yes. So that's a big part of my job. So I'm in charge of our partnerships. And it's a little bit interesting in this space because China, we do not have our own delivery drivers. We are not a delivery company. Um, so in when it comes to delivery, we do have to kind of be frenemies in this space, for instance. So DoorDash. Other companies do have the driver infrastructure. Yes, exactly. So we have to work with 
Um, we work with the, the large marketplaces, but in a di completely different way. So for instance, DoorDash, um, they have a they have an arm of their business called DoorDash Drive, where essentially companies like ours can utilize their drivers. But what the difference is, it's a flat rate fee per mile for the restaurant. So DoorDash doesn't, because it's through us, they don't take a, a cut of the sale. And it's up to the restaurant how they want that fee to be distributed. Do they want the customer to pay for the fee? Then the delivery is 100% free for the restaurant. Does the restaurant maybe want to throw in a couple dollars? Like they have that flexibility to say, they, they're in control essentially understood so so if they are doing a delivery there's still a charge that is on top of the 99 to 149 dollars a month it is a flat fee though based on the on the proximity the distance so if i'm going five miles it's x if i'm going six miles it's y uh and then it doesn't matter what the what the purchase price of that is Right. No, not at all. So it's just very transparent per mile pricing. And the um, the restaurant can choose to have the consumer, their diner, pay okay. for the whole delivery fee piece, or we give them the option because some of them want, they view, they want their price, their delivery fee to be lower, but and they're willing to throw in like a dollar or $2 per delivery um, to enable that. But they keep all of the, outside yeah. of the $99 they pay us, they keep all the profit. And maybe just a range, like what is that number potentially per mile or just, you know, is there a number of transaction, like a $9 transaction, then have $3 and you include that because it's $3 for, you know, a six mile trip. That math doesn't maybe make sense. Give, give me some insight there. Yeah. So the, the um, most of our deliveries are within two miles. Yeah, um, exactly. I mean, if a restaurant wants to go further, they can. The delivery pricing is six seventy five for the first mile and then a dollar for each additional mile. Okay. Um, and that's through DoorDash Drive. So if, if that's if the restaurant wants to turn on DoorDash Drive. We also have other partnerships locally. So we work with another local company here in Los Angeles. We have another company in New York um, that we work with. And then if a restaurant, if they have their own courier or their own delivery company that they want to plug in, our our system can do that. Um, and we just set it up for them in whatever pricing they've negotiated with their delivery partner. Yeah, you're seeing a lot more of those, those pop up, the opportunity for different courier companies are popping up. And so there's a huge opportunity. Clearly they are. And, and then you probably have an opportunity to negotiate or whatever that might be. So uh, yep. this is great. What else do we need to know? Last couple minutes here. What else do we need to know that we have not touched on about Chow Now yet? Um, I mean, I think the things that make us unique, I think are, there's a lot of people in the space right now. Toast just came out with their own product. So, Square rolled out their own product. There, you see website companies coming out with products. I mean, everyone is trying to get into the online ordering game right now. Of course. Um, so I think it's really important to highlight what makes us different and why restaurants should maybe consider working with somebody that's dedicated to this rather than a company that it's secondary for what they do. Um, the main things that make us different, we do branded apps. So if you want your own iPhone or Android app, Chow Now will build that for you. We also um, have the largest ordering network um, that out there. So a restaurant, a lot of times they come to us and say, how are you gonna bring me business? And the, our answer to that is, well, we'll help you reach out to your current customers, but to reach new customers, we do have a Chow Now app that's growing in popularity. Um, all orders through our app are in our website are 100% commission free. And then we have this ordering network of partners. So we're integrated with Google, Yelp, TripAdvisor, OpenTable, um, Resi, um, Instagram. You can take orders directly from your Instagram story. No other, com no other online ordering company has right. those partnerships. So essentially anywhere somebody's searching for restaurants or searching for food, you're going to be there with a button to order. So that is like golden and not something anybody else can say. Um, and, and so Facebook as well, right? You've been doing that. Facebook for a while too. Yeah. We were the first to work with Facebook. Yeah. Um, but Instagram is new. Uh, I I need to look into that a little bit. So basically what we're saying here is we're finding an opportunity for somebody's on Facebook. They're doing this, which everybody is doing. They're on mm -hmm. their phone. Make sure people can see. I'm on my phone. Um, at Instagram, I'm geeking out. I'm looking at, you know, food photos. And, and I'm sure that there's targeting that you can make sure and, and push ads or whatever that might be. And then somebody says, I'm hungry. That looks amazing. And they can go and order. Right. I'm sure you have a button right on everybody's Instagram and Facebook pages that they can go directly from there. Yeah. So the, the amazing thing about Instagram um, in particular is you can add it to your profile, but 
you can add it to your story. And the story is what drives most of the orders that we're seeing is if you add the food ordering button to your story, powered by Chow Now, um, you post a delicious lunch that you special that you just made and you say order now, the person doesn't have to go anywhere else. They're, they're already looking at your story. It's just a swipe up? They just click. Yeah, just click. Yeah. And is that available to everyone? I know like swipe ups, like our accounts have whatever, over 10,000. So we're allowed, but other people don't have those because you know, they have 1600 people or whatever. Is it, is it for everybody? Anybody can have an order button on their stories? Yes. As long as, um, as long as you're, you have a business account on yep. Instagram, it doesn't matter how many followers you have. Um, but yes, I think it's been available to like 95% of the restaurants that we work with. Right. So most people will have access to it. That's a very interesting thing because I also do know people that have restaurants who have a personal account for the restaurant because they just, you know, because they're restaurant people, they don't, aren't spending time mm -hmm. thinking about the difference between a business account on Facebook or Instagram. So make sure you have a business account. That's a huge unlock to be able to get onto stories because there's so much, it's just, it feels so instant that it's, here's what it is, people. It is all the stuff at the uh, checkout at the grocery store that you just don't, you're just like, all right, I guess I need some gum. I, I totally need some chapstick. Absolutely. And so to have that button there just makes it instant. Uh, it's huge. Reducing friction is a massive part of what we're talking about. Yeah. Leah, I really appreciate you being on. This is a great conversation. I learned several things and I'm studied. And so the fact that a lot of restaurants have heard the name, kind of know, don't understand how it's different, are concerned about delivery. Uh, I hope we uh, we set in their minds a little bit that you absolutely need to be in this space. You need to be thoughtful about it. You can create an amazing experience for your guests in their home. And if Chow Now can help you do that, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Sounds awesome. Thanks for having me. All right, Leah, have a great day. We're gonna let you go. And I'm gonna talk to the to the audience a little bit and uh, appreciate you. Take care. All right, bye. All right, Leah, thank you so much uh, to her, to Chow Now for giving us a little bit of time, some insights. And you know what I really like about this opportunity is like, I've, except for Instagram, I wasn't that studied on. I've read everything that Leah said, yet it really matters to me to have a human on the other side of the equation of the nuts and bolts of what uh, this app versus that app versus this uh, service versus that service is. It really, really matters. And so there's a couple of things, having that dedicated person who's out there poking and prodding and making sure that you are marketing having the focus on retargeting to somebody who came through maybe another channel and you want to yeah pay that 30 percent for the one-time transaction you have to own that customer i think is important and then voice of the client i absolutely love that a company that has that anchor and the north star to be able to stay focused on the voice of the clients i think is massively massively important we're coming into the listening economy, you know, and it's something that we talked about a little bit. I think about, you know, the gig economy and the sharing economy and uh, Gary V had the thank you economy. It's the listening economy now and being able to stay focused on your customer and for them, it's the restaurant, I think is hugely, hugely important. So, all right, great episode today. Uh, look into Chow now, and we're going to be talking a lot more on this channel of Best Serve Smart about smart kitchens, technology, innovation, tools, and equipment, things to empower the humans working within hospitality and to amplify those businesses as we continue to evolve. And we're evolving at a massive rate, and there's some struggles in that. I know I think there's huge opportunities as well. So thank you so much. Appreciate you as always. Cheers. <laughs>